Evet herkese selamlar. Bugün İstanbul'dayız. Önemli benim açımdan da e, çok önemli bir röportajla karşınızdayım. E, yanımızda Omar var. Omar kendisi Tangers, Alpaca ve Regal Hukuk'un CEO'su. Satışlarıyla ilgileniyor. E, bugün kendisiyle birlikte olmak, e, sohbet etmek, röportajı yapmak, kendisine sorular sormak benim için çok mutlu edici bir şey. Çünkü Tangers'ın bendeki yeri gerçekten çok farklı. Yıllardır içtiğim ve hayranı olduğum bir marka. Gerçekten bir markaya karşı fanatizmim varsa o da Tangers'tır. Ee, i̇nşallah bugün e, çok daha vaktini almadan güzel bir sohbet edeceğiz. Kendisine sizlerin de sorduğunuz sorular var. Önden şunu söyleyeyim. İngilizcem çok iyi değil bunu biliyorum. Ama olabildiğince e, sizlere duyguları doğru ve anlaşılır bir şekilde aktarmaya çalışacağım. Uh, yes, Mr. Omar. Yes, uh, Thank you. Welcome again. Thank you. Firstly, how are you? Amazing. Amazing. You guys have made the uh, experience great. This country is hospitable and amazing team we have here. Okay, thank you. Uh, my first question. Uh, can you introduce yourself to us? Yes. So, Omar, I'm from the United States. Uh, my main focus is three brands, Alpaca, Regal, and Tangiers. Uh, I'm here kind of trying to represent the United States community, our ideas, our movement, and understand the Turkish ideas, community, and movement, and try to figure out how we can connect together. Okay, thank you. Um, so... Uh, what is happening uh, at the moment, uh, Alpaca, Regal, Tangers, and uh, can you briefly summarize? Yeah, so obviously I could go very deep, but yeah, briefly is, is good to put that in there. I would say uh, Alpaca, we're working on a uh, few things. One, revisiting uh, the craft, meaning what can we do different, changing the game, understanding more of what these past eight years of how Alpaca have been, and how to give the customer really what they want, not what uh, the, now the market as an international market, each country needs and wants different things. So we need to understand each country and make sure that we're producing for what these people want. For Regal and Tangiers, I would say we're doing the same, uh, except with Tangiers specifically because we are newer in Europe now and Turkey, Cyprus. Our job is to understand the way the style of smoking is here, also bringing the American style, Russian style, and creating a good community around Alpaca, Regal, Tangiers. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, this is uh, important question for me uh, because uh, Turkish uh, hookah smokers uh, like uh, Russian dark leaf tobacco. Yeah. And uh, my question: uh, What distinguishes tangers from Russian darks? Uh, many things, I guess. To uh, simplify it, one tangiers is the original first dark leaf tobacco, and so every other dark leaf tobacco. And no offense, there's some amazing dark leaf Russian brands, but they are all uh, essentially the next after tangiers. So the original usually sets the standard. And I believe Tangiers set the standard for dark leaf tobacco. Uh, there is new emerging brands that use different processes. Uh, I would say we've found a magic sauce with Tangiers and no one to date has been able to make something the same as Tangiers. So they're similar, but you can't get the same like, like us. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, can you tell me three uh, dark leaf tobacco brands uh, that you like besides Tangers? If you s tell, uh, if you cannot, um, it's not problem for me. I mean, there's so many brands and why I would like a company might be a different reason. Maybe I like the owner of the company, but I don't like his tobacco. <laughs> or 
I like the the branding, but I don't like their this. So it's hard to say names, and I don't want to disrespect anybody. Yes. But I really, truly, I only smoke Tangiers. Okay, I understand. So I'm, I've I try different dark leaves, and there's some good ones uh, I've tried. I would say like. Matt Pear has made some good dark leaf blends. Uh, dark Side is a cool company, great branding. Uh, Trifecta Moose, you did a good job. Yeah, I think some people have done some amazing work. Respect. Thank you. Uh, Peki, uh, do you plan to manufacture in Turkey? No. Because why? Um, we can barely even manufacture enough in the United States and keep the quality where we need it. Yeah. The second you move production, change production, go out of country with production, you open up uh, quality issues, mm-hmm. consistency issues. Uh, even the humidity makes a big difference with tobacco. So if you make tobacco in... Dominican Republic or you produce in United States or you produce in uh, Russia, you're going to have a different end product. The flavor is going to go into the tobacco differently based on the humidity that it's made in. So this is why we prefer to produce in the United States, tobacco grown in the United States, flavoring made in the United everything U.S. made. And Also, we make Tangiers in very small batches. We don't use big machines. We don't have production line. Everything is handmade. Hand-cut tobacco. This is very hard to keep consistent to go other places. I understand. Handmade has to be one place. Not easy. I understand. Like Cohiba Cigar mm. never will make Cohiba outside of Cuba. Yes, yes. That's true. Okay. So this answer for alpaca. Uh, why is alpaca expensive in Turkey, and what distinguishes it from other bowls? I would say it's expensive due to the trade uh, issues in Turkey. Um, meaning the import export is not the same like other countries we distribute in. Uh, I would also say the community here is starting to understand the quality, and so. The amount of money that a normal per- normal smoker is going to pay for a bowl, they don't want to pay forty, fifty dollars for a bowl. They don't understand yet. Part of that, they smoke blonde leaf tobacco here mostly. Dark leaf tobacco requires a higher quality bowl, a different clay, higher heat. So this is why alpaca is different than other brands. Why it's more expensive. What is the difference? It's the heat, the amount of heat that it has. Once people get into dark leaf, they will need alpaca bowls, or there's some other good bowls on the market. But it has to be high quality, high heat bowls. Understand? So, uh, what has changed after Eric stayed in Tangiers? What will change in the future? Um, I mean, first off, my respect to Eric and respect. Um, I think a lot will change because you can copy a product, you can't copy a person. And so Eric created a line that you, his mind is in the product, and he taught us how to understand this so we can run the company how he wanted the company ran. So I don't think there is. Uh, any decreasing if anything i think it motivated us as a company to continue his legacy mm, understand so uh, what are you thinking about eric's packing uh eric's packing is the best way to get flavor so if you're looking for in a bowl to last five eight hours full flavor uh feel it in the lungs this is how you pack it If you also you enjoy the art of packing, it's fun for you. It's a fun way to pack. Uh, for hookah lounges, sometimes they have difficulty training people how to pack in Eric's way. So this is why there's the new way of cloud lotus or coconut charcoal on foil or apple on top with 
these are uh, sorry provost by Apple on top and these are maybe the new uh, ways people are speeding up the packing method okay thank you we will look uh, today evening uh, your packing yeah. and <laughs> I will add your packing video cool. and however anybody packs if you enjoy it and you're happy this is the most important of course we love to teach you how to pack the way we pack or how Eric packs. At the end of the day, we are a community who will create ideas together. And if you pack differently, maybe I smoke and I say, this is good yes. for this style of smoke. Yes. Uh, I want to read this question because my English not enough for this Got question. It. <laughs> uh, is it necessary to ventilate the tangers when we first, first open it? Uh, if so, How should it be done? So it goes back to the humidity when you're making the tobacco and where the tobacco is stored, how it's handled, all makes a difference. So like a cigar, you put it in a humidifier, you make sure the humidity is the same ideally all the time. This is the goal with Tangier. So it should be acclimated, meaning the tobacco meets the climate that it's in. So right now the package is in the United States climate. When you open the package, now it's getting used to this climate. This should help the way that the tobacco heats up and bonds together. Because sometimes uh, the, the liquid and molasses can separate from the tobacco a little bit. And so mixing it and letting it acclimate and letting oxygen hit it yes. can help open up the flavor. Yes. How, how, my, how much time mix? It depends where you are. If you're in a very cold, dry place, yeah. uh, you will probably have to uh, mix. Actually, no, because if you're in a very hot place, the liquid will become very juicy. Yeah. If you're in cold place, so... Ideally, you want to acclimate it slowly, so maybe one day you leave it open. Mm. Sometimes I would leave, if your flavor is very high sugar, you can leave it open for longer mm. and your flavor will change. So it depends also what you want. If you like a lot of flavor uh, and you don't care as much about the way the tobacco is burning, then you don't have to acclimate. If you really care about the lung hit, the throat, what Arif was talking about yesterday, yes, yes, this is what uh, it makes a difference. If you want consistent smoke, you have to store consistently. And I understand. Thank you. Uh, what does tangers mean? Tangers. Uh, Tangier. I mean, one, it's a a port in in Morocco, Tangier port, but Tangiers is just, it's a, it's a city in Morocco. Yes, yes, Tangiers. I, I know this answer, but uh, my followers question. Uh, why is there no regal in Turkey? What regal? I think, regal. Uh, I think after talking with the community here, uh, there is one, a lot of replicas of regal that have arrived at very cheap prices so people got used to these prices regal hookah is all handmade in america we use high quality aluminum and stainless steel if if there's a problem with a regal hookah we will take care of it even one year later if your piece is not working right you call us we take care of you so this is why ours is a little more expensive But I think this is one and two. We haven't brought Regal here yet. I brought one, but it's stuck in customs now, so we can't get it through. But once we start bringing Regal and people smoke it, I know people will want Regal here. Yes, it's expensive, but it's high quality. Exactly. Yeah. And we, we back the consumer. So anybody who buys Regal... You are part of our family, and, and if anything is wrong with your Regal, we will take care of you. And we work with you and Tamar and uh, Yusuf to try to have a team here. So if you have questions, you reach out to anybody here, and they will find me, and we will take care of you. Okay, thank you. I have one more uh, important question. 
Uh, are there fake tangers in Turkey? Are the ones from Cyprus original? So I'm, I'm still, while I'm here, we'll find out where and what is fake or real. Uh, the only real importer is Cyprus. Smoke Factory is the only one we work with to bring in Tangiers. So this is this is the only way to bring it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so Ev- everybody else is not authentic. Yeah. Is it fake? I don't know. Is it counterfeit or unauthentic? Maybe. Okay. Uh, so, uh, are there variations from country to country in Tangiers, or does uh, the same tobacco go everywhere? Is there variation? Meaning, like, different uh, flavors, uh, tobacco, same, uh, same everywhere. Yeah, we only have Every- one factory uh, in understand. the United States. We have one building, one factory. All the tobacco is made the same, whether it's for California or for Brazil or Spain or. So nicotine flavor, same. Uh, same. The only difference is, for example, for Germany. Uh, they don't allow cane mint because of their flavor restrictions. So we can't bring cane mint to Germany. Okay. But yet, so maybe we won't sell all of the flavors everywhere, but they're made the same way no matter what. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so thank you for your uh, answers. Of course. Uh, thank you for your visit and uh, this conversion. Uh, and uh, do you want to say one last thing uh, yeah. for uh, Turkish hookah smokers? Of course. I mean, first off, I want to send a lot of love to this country. And I know you're dealing with um, a few tragedies that the whole world needs to come together and support you on. So that's most important. Uh, second, I, I want to say thank you for listening. And two, if you have any questions... Please reach out if you have ideas or anything. Reach out anytime. We want to talk with you and see what does Turkey want? What do you need? Um, how can we work with your community to be a strong hookah culture together? Okay. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always